about life, death, and eternity. Isaac Asimov tells, I don't believe in an afterlife, so I don't have to spend my whole life fearing, fearing hell or fearing heaven even more. For whatever in uh, tortures of hell, I think the uh, boredom of heaven would be even more. I love inviting words. One of my favorites is a mistake. A mistake is a combination of a mistake and a meat. I keep checking in Webster's dictionary and they haven't put the word in, the, in there yet. But 20 years from now, when my mistake is in all the dictionaries of the world, you can say to your sons and daughters, I remember back in the day when Pete Berisco first used this new famous word in a daily devotional. Unlike a mistake, however, a mistake is not an accident. It's an error that's a consequence of believing a meat, a commonly held nation that has no basis in truth. Mistakes can have serious earthly consequences, but some mistakes impact not only this life, but the life to come as well. What happens beyond the grave? What happens in eternity as in forever? That's both exciting and scary because people believe things about eternal life that are myths. If they buy into those myths, they, they will make mistakes that last a long, long time. If we want to avoid these mistakes, we need to know more than the facts of life. We need to know the facts about eternal life. The most, import most important fact is this, and this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. Forever, whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Any meat that causes us to make mistakes by distracting or distracting us or diverting us from Jesus is serious. We see these mistakes all around us. We will take the, a look at them one at a time in the days ahead and you will be able to recognize them in the people around you but you are willing to recognize any of these mistakes in yourself holy spirit burn into my soul the reality of heaven and hell search my heart and reveal the myths that have infiltrated my belief about everlasting love and replace them with the truth from your living word Amen, hallelujah, amen. The myth about getting into heaven. You may all go to hell and I will go to Texas. When it comes time to decide how to get off the road to hell and her head toward heaven, many people base their beliefs on myths and not the word of God. A lot of people believe if you are a good enough person, you will get to heaven. I call this the good guy mistake. The words of Jesus, however, destroyed this notion. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, No one is good ex except God alone. By human standards, the man that Jesus was talking to, to was a good man. He had kept all the law since he was young, and yet Jesus stopped me 
track and said, no one is good except God, of course. Jesus obliterated the assumption of being a good guy before the conversation even got started. Here's the problem with the God guy mistake. We compare ourselves to other humans. It's not too tough to find somebody who's more of a scumbag than we are. So in our minds, we think compared to that other guy, I am a pretty good guy. Jesus says, if you want to compare yourself to someone, compare yourself to God. He is the ultimate standard of what is good. Hmm, that's a little tough, isn't it? Compared to God, we are anything but God, but good. Good guys are just an illusion come, uh, created by human to human comparison. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. Listen, if we are honest, we will realize that we are all guilty of this mistake to one degree or another. It's one of the patterns that just seems to be built into our flesh. Every day, however, we can replace this meat with truth. Jesus, I want to break free from this mistake today. By the power of your spirit in me, replace my tendencies to judge and compare with a profound awareness of your grace and the free gift of eternal life that you have given me. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you have a crooked view of hell? Go to heaven for the climate, hell for the company. All right, then I will go to hell. It's taught multiple study. I had a classmate in high school to tell me once, I would rather par uh, party in hell with my friends than go to heaven without them. If he had known what the Bible teaches us about him, I suspect the, his party cry would be different. You have to be crooked to uh, verbalize this myth, but many people do. It can be summarized by a poem on a birthday card. Why worry? Either you are well or you are sick. If you are well, you have nothing to worry about. If you are sick, you only have two things to worry about. Either you will live or you will die. If you will, you have any, nothing to worry about. If you die, you only have two things to worry about. Either you will go to heaven or you will go to hell. If you go to heaven, you have nothing to worry about. If you go to hell, you will be busy shaking hands with friends that you won't have time to worry. Happy birthday. What this part is trying to tell you is that how Satan and his demon in this world try to make you sick and make you sin. But be good, be good, and you draw your friends to good things that all of you go in the heaven which is the full of joy, happiness and eternal life. Amen. The crooked meat says hell is going to be an eternal continuation of the party here on earth. But the truth is we will have a hell of a lot of worry about if we don't go to heaven. The haunting descriptions we have of hell in scripture indicate that souls who go there exist in suspended isolation and darkness forever. If someone says they would rather be in hell with their friends than in heaven alone, ask them why they think 
their friends are going to hell and why they think they are going to the uh, to better uh, to be uh, together they probably won't have an answer heaven is where the party is going to be an eternal eruption of praise and worship together no more tears no more death who wouldn't want to be there Lord Jesus, use me today as you see fit to tell people about the party that awaits in heaven. By your love flowing through me, invite those around me to join in the eternal dance of grace together with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. genuine relationship with Jesus looks like. I don't know what I have been living on but it's not enough to fill me up. I want the best of both worlds and honey I know I know what it's worth. If we could have the best of world, both worlds we would have heaven right here on earth. For some, Jesus just a truck stop on the road of life. They just stop in for, you know, for a fill up and get on with life as usual. It's Jesus when you need him and everything you want on earth too. The problem is that the scripture doesn't say that's the way it works at all. Just because you say the prayer doesn't mean that you know Jesus. I call this the pass him by mistake. Those who truly know G uh, Christ are marked by an ins uh, inspirational life change. Eternal life starts the day you believe in Jesus Christ and receive him into your life. Your life becomes his life and his life becomes yours. First, this changes your attitude. For the love of money is a rot of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs, but you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, good, goodliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good conf uh, confession in the presence of many witnesses. Second, your behavior changes. Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. I indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The person who is comfortable passing by Jesus and then give going on with life as normal would be wise to stop and question whether or not they know him at all. It is far better to search your heart today rather than life with the consequences of the passing him by, by in eternity. Holy Spirit, are you in me? Am I in you? Jesus, I embrace you as my Savior and life right now. From the inside out, transform my attitude and my actions. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Embrace the promises of God in the year ahead. 2020 is coming to an end. This year started rather uneventfully, but none of us know, knew a novel virus was hatching in the crowded market of China. 
about as the year progressed and the global pandemic became evident, the realization dawned upon us that the world was facing a challenging the likes of which we had not seen in our lifetimes. And there is uh, been no shortage of pain and anguish. Yet, in the midst of the of all the distru- uh, disruption and unheaven, God has not left Himself without witness. God is calling His people to rise to the occasion of meeting the needs of our hurting world. The grieving still need comfort, the hurting need healing, the frightened need peace, the questioning need answers, and the confused need clarity. And the great need of the day is for the mobilization of the people of God in a lifestyle that proclaims peace in the pandemic, certainly in the midst of chaos, and a clear explanation of the relevance of the gospel in days of turmoil. And, and, and together with wonderful friends like you, we are reaching so many in desperate need of hope during this unprecedented day. You see, ever since we began this work decades ago, the ministries and methods by which we do so have changed dramatically. But then there are some things that never change. The faithfulness of the gospel, the need of prayer, and the need for support for the ministry to help more people know Christ and experience life in Him. Then pray, pray that our nurses and doctors have enough knowledge to rescue a lot of people from uh, that uh, virus and diseases. Amen. gradual one, the gentle slope, soft un, uh, underfoot, without sudden turnings, without uh, milestones, without sign spots. In today's demanding world, priorities are a must, but what happens if we procrastinate the most important thing of all and fail to prioritize our eternal destiny. That leads to what I call the standby might stake. It sounds like, uh, like the words of another man Jesus described. Then he said, this is what I will do. I will tear down my bones and build bigger ones, and there, there I will store my surplus uh, uh, grain. And I will say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this 
very night your life will be demanded from you, then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? The mistake is pretty basic. It says, yeah, yeah, I believe that you, I believe that, but I will deal with it later. I don't have to explain how foolish this is, do I? Later could come in an instant, disaster can strike at any time with consequences that last forever. Like most mistakes, this one dis uh, dissolves with the uh, least bit of a thought. The night the man lost his life, the Bible tells us the truth. God uh, invited uh, us to live in truth today. I don't know. Jesus, I agree that my days on earth are numbered, and I really have to idea when my number is up. I surrender everything I have and everything. I am to you right now. I am trusting you to live in me and through me today to your glory. Hallelujah. Amen. The worst mistake you can make. Christianity is not a formula but the person of Jesus himself. Never think that Christianity is a matter of adjusting behavior but rather of letting Christ live through us in his strength and power. No doubt there are a lot of mistakes out there about, about heaven, hell and eternity. Some are foolish and some are selfish. The last meat on, on my list, however, is the one that breaks my heart the most. They need, uh, they need not apply mistakes. Many people believe the good guy and good try meets, but they are honest enough to know that they don't have a chance to make it. They believe that only good people will make it into heaven and they are smart enough and humble enough to know that they are not good. Their honest, honesty deflates their hope for they know they are guilty, a lost cause, a hopeless case, a reject. Why even try? There is no point it is unless useless no need to apply for eternal life what it is. and they are right partially they have only been told half the truth the truth about sin and how to eat separates us from god the other half of the gospel is truly good news to people who know that they are they are bad. The message of Christ's life and sacrifice is like a crystal clear splash of ice water to those dying of thirst in the deserts of sin and shame. The people who are making these mistakes are often stunned when they hear the rest of the story, what God has done for them through the uh, person of uh, Jesus Christ. What benefit did you reap at the, that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life for the wage, wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord that's the good news and it never gets old it is the gift you receive once but it keeps on giving every breath of every day until you take your last breath and step into eternity with him forever. Heavenly Father God, 
How can I praise you for your lavish grace and unending mercy? On the basis of what your son Jesus did, I choose to trust you to cleanse me and enable me to live free of sin, guilt, and condemnation today. No more shame, Lord. I rest in the completeness of your forgiveness and the presence of your spirit in me. Hallelujah. Amen. Questions, questions, questions. When the mask of self-righteousness has been torn from us and we stand stripped of all our accustomed defenses, we are candidates for God's generous grace. I like asking questions. It's a great way to make people come to conclusions on their own or at least lead them in the direction of truth. I once asked a young woman at a mall the following questions. Is heaven a perfect place? Yes, absolutely, she said. Do you think you will go there? I think I have a pretty good shot. I have tried my hardest, she answered. Have you lived a perfect life? Well, of course not. Who has? But I am better than most people I know. Well, I continued. If heaven is a perfect place and you have not lived a perfect life, what makes you think you can go there without wrecking it? Long pause followed by the nervous laughter. We need to be willing to ask these hard questions of those around us and of ourselves. Are we telling the truth to those around us? Paul really desired we would. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there, uh, there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their the deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become uh, in every response, respect the mature body of uh, him who is head, that is Christ particularly with eternally important issues like heaven and hell. We need to let the world uh, be our standard and the love of the Spirit uh, be our guide. We have to believe that our good works have zero chance of getting us to heaven, that hell is a real place, that Jesus is far too valuable to pass by, that the decision to choose him is urgent, and that the reward of choosing him is indescribable. My Jesus, give me a sincere heart for those who are bound for a godness eternity. Use me to destroy myths and share you with everyone you place in my path. Amen.